All right, going to do a video debunking Stephen Anderson's view and teaching that Romans 4 quote unquote demolishes dispensational salvation. What he does is he takes Romans 4, he takes that and says, see look, it says that Abraham believed God and he was counted for righteousness, therefore Abraham was justified by faith alone, proving faith alone in every single dispensation. I mean, that's what they do. They, they take Romans 4, which is in the church age, doctrinally, and they apply it to every dispensation, which is not correct. That's not how you do it. That's not rightly, not rightly divided into the word of truth, like Paul said in, in the book of Timothy. So, he takes Romans 4, and he, and he twists what it's saying, and he won't read you James 2.22, which debunks his claim, and he just makes a complete mess of the Bible. I'm going to show you some clips right here of him, of him doing that. Let's get right into it. Verse 1 of Romans 4 what shall we say then that Abraham our father, as pertaining to the flesh, hath found? And notice, he's speaking to the Romans, and he's saying, Abraham our father. Okay, first point I want to make. He takes, and Anderson, he believes in replacement theology. So he thinks that we're, we've replaced the Jews. So what he does is that he takes this verse in Romans where he says Paul is speaking to the Romans and how we're the children of Abraham and he is basically saying that in the sense of we've replaced the Jews. Well, if you read Galatians chapter 3, it talks about how in Christ we're basically the spiritual children of Abraham, but we haven't replaced the Jews. See, what he's doing here is a very sneaky way of saying, oh, we've replaced the Jews. Because what it's saying here, because yeah, we're the children of Abraham in a spiritual sense, because through Jesus Christ we gain the promises that, that were given to Abraham, but we haven't replaced the Jews. That's where he goes wrong. So I wanted to make a comment right there because he just slips in replacement theology right there. But let's continue. For if Abraham were justified by works, he hath whereof to glory, but not before God. So he's saying right there that Abraham was not justified by works. If he had been justified by works, he would have had something to boast about or brag about or something whereof to glory, but not before God. He could have gloried to his fellow man, but that kind of glorying isn't going to hold up in God's eyes. Why? Because God is so much greater and holier than any of us. We can't glory to him about our own works. Okay, so Anderson is right in the sense that Abraham was not justified by works alone, but was it by faith alone? Nope. James 2.21, was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar? He was justified by works. What does this mean? Well, I have written in my notes here that the faith that Abraham had was he believed that he trusted and believed that God was going to provide him a sacrifice. But there was an element of works he had to do. It says right here he had to offer his son Isaac upon the altar. So it was faith that God was going to give him a sacrifice, but it works because he had to offer his son up on the altar and he's about to like stab his son in the heart. And then God says, you know, stop and, and provides a, a, a goat, I think, or a lamb, you know, to replace it. But there were the works that were involved. It literally says, you know, was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar? There was an element of works that Abraham ha had to do to be justified. So yeah, he, there was an element of faith that was, was, was required. Faith was definitely part of it, but it was not faith alone. That's where Anderson goes wrong. But let's continue. So it says here that if Abraham were justified by works, he hath whereof the glory, but not before God. For what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Okay, what did Abraham believe? Okay, he believed that God was going to provide him a lamb for the sacrifice. He trusted God. But there was works that were involved, like in James 2.21. You know, Abraham offered his son Isaac on the cross. I mean, not on the cross, the altar, sorry. Which actually was a type of Jesus dying on the cross, by the way. Because you have Abraham offering his son upon the altar, and then God offering his son, Jesus Christ. So it is a type of Jesus Christ. But was it by faith alone? No, there were still works that were involved. Abraham offering his son upon the altar was those works. So Abraham was not justified by faith alone. Okay? That's where Anderson goes wrong. Let's continue. So that right there states that the person who does not do works but believes on Christ is justified by his faith because his faith is counted for righteousness. Yes, that is true in this dispensation, the church age, or I like to call it the time of the Gentiles, but was that true in the Old Testament? No. Let me show you some proof on that. Ezekiel chapter, where is it? Ezekiel, where is Ezekiel? Chapter 3, 
verse 18 and 20. You know, this one makes a problem for this non-dispensationalist thing that salvation's always been by faith alone, it's always been by faith. Then you have these goons like Ed Fenninger come out and say, well, it's talking about physical salvation. This whole thing of physical salvation is just this term they made up. Think about, because whenever you show Fenninger these verses that prove dispensational salvation, because he claims to be a dispensationalist, but he rejects dispensational salvation, he always says that, oh, it's talking about physical salvation, a term he just made up out of thin air to explain away verses. And then people like Anderson, uh, they, they, they have to they know, do these mental acrobatics to explain away these texts as well. Because they can't handle the fact that salvation has not always been by faith alone. So, Ezekiel 18, or 3.18. When I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning, nor speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life, that same, or that same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thine hand. Verse 19. Yet if thou warn the wicked, and he turn not from his wickedness, nor his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy soul. Sorry, my cat just jumped up on my, my lap. You see right there, delivered thy soul. So your soul is delivered because you're, sorry, your soul is delivered because you're warning the wicked. And notice there, he in order to turn from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity. So you have to turn from your wicked way or you're dying in your iniquity. Dying in your sin and you go to hell. How is that faith alone? Verse 20, again, when a righteous man doth turn from his righteousness and commit iniquity and lay a stumbling block before him, he shall die because thou hast given him not, yet, sorry, thou hast not given him warning. He shall die in his sin and his righteousness, which he hath done, shall not be remembered, but his blood will require at thine hand. And you go to verse 21, nevertheless, if, if uh, thou warn the righteous man and the righteous, that the righteous sin not, and he, sorry, and he doth not sin, he shall surely live because he is warned, and thou hast delivered thy soul. So again, your soul is delivered because you're warning people not to sin. And, and look in verse 20, it's talking about a righteous man here, a righteous man dying in his sin. It literally says, he shall die in his sin, you know, if he turns from his righteousness. So they're saved by faith alone in the Old Testament? I don't think so. They had, there was an element of holiness, holy, holy living that was required. Okay? It was not faith alone. Here's some more proof on that. Ezekiel 18, here's a good one. Ezekiel 18, verse 4. Because these same people will say there's, there is eternal security in the Old Testament as well. Well, that was not the case. Ezekiel 18, 4. Behold, all souls are mine, as the soul of the Father, so also is the soul of the Son is mine. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. Now again, to Ed Fenninger, he'll say, oh, it's talking about physical salvation. Um, even if physical salvation was biblical, this can't be talking about quote-unquote physical salvation because it says the soul that sinneth, it shall die. Talking about the soul dying. So even if physical salvation was biblical, this is not talking about quote-unquote physical salvation. You go to jump down to verse 20. Ezekiel 18.20, The soul that sinneth, it shall die. The son shall not bear the iniquity of the father, neither shall the father bear the iniquity of the son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him, and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. Again, the soul that sinneth, it shall die. What, is, what does it mean when your soul dies? You go to hell. Then you go to, uh, jump down to verse 27. Here's a good one proving a, a works a element of works that were involved in the Old Testament. Ezekiel 18, 27. Again, when the right or again when the wicked man turneth away from his wickedness that he hath committed, and doeth that which is lawful and right, he shall save his soul alive. So he's so he's saving his soul because he's turning from his wickedness. So they're saved by faith alone? I don't think so. So, again, just, just proving that Anderson does not know the Bible. I mean, how do you how do you ignore that? He shall save his soul, the soul that sinneth, it shall die. His righteousness, which he hath done, shall not be remembered. I, and that's just, those are just a couple of verses. There's scripture after scripture after scripture that prove that there was an element of works that were involved in the Old Testament and that you could lose your salvation. What about in, uh, where is it? I think it's in, uh, let me just check my notes. What about, uh, where is it? Where is it? What about 1 Samuel chapter 18, verse 10 to 12, where the spirit of the Lord departs from King Saul? Uh, uh, Ephesians, 3, Ephesians 1 13 says we're sealed with the Holy Spirit. How does that work? It's two different dispensations. The Holy Spirit could depart from somebody back in the Old Testament, but under the church age, we're sealed with the Holy Spirit, according to Ephesians 1 13. And what, what about Isaiah, or what about Psalm 51 11? You know, King David says, take not thy Holy Spirit from me. From, from me. Sorry. Again, Ephesians 1 13, we're sealed with the Holy Spirit until the day, or, uh, sorry, we're sealed with the Holy Spirit. And Ephesians 4 30 says we're sealed until the day of redemption. How does that work? It doesn't. Two different dispensations. But Anderson doesn't get that. So, I mean, I could just say more, but I, I, I don't know what else to say. This, this guy is just, he's so heretical. He does not understand the Bible. 
But, you know, what do you expect? Because with non-dispensationalism, I believe they actually have a lying spirit. I mean, with people like Fenninger, I believe that they actually have a lying spirit inside of them that is stopping them from seeing the truth. Because it's very, very clear in Scripture. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. It's not talking about physical salvation. Uh, it's crazy. Let's continue. This also flies in the face of those who would teach that because faith without works is dead, they'll teach that you can't go to heaven without works. That's a lie. Because the Bible says right here that to him that worketh not, but believeth, it says that he's saved. His faith is counted for righteousness. He's justified. So this idea that says, well, faith is always accompanied by works is a fraud because Romans 4, 5 talks about a guy who has the faith, but he doesn't have the works. And again, that's true in this dispensation. We're not saved by works, but James 2 actually contradicts um, the Pauline epistles. So Anderson will you run through James 2. Well, it's kind of funny. Why won't he read James 2, 24 to 26, which completely fly in the face of non-dispensationalism. James 2, 24, 26. Let me show you it. Show you what it says. Sorry. You see then that how by works a man is justified and not by faith only. Verse 25, likewise also was Rahab the harlot, or was not Rahab the harlot justified by works when she had received the messengers and sent them out another way. Verse 26, for as a body without the spirit is dead, so as faith without or so a faith without works is dead also. Huh. So they're justified by works and not by faith only? And again, who is James written to? James 1.1 1, 1 says it's to the 12 tribes. And I also believe that the book of James is, is dispensationally in the time of Jacob's trouble. Not for now. In the time of Jacob's trouble, there is also an element of works that will be involved. Because you can't take the mark of the beast. Then I have this, this Ed, Ed Fenninger, this, this uh, satanic heretic, Ed Fenninger. He says, that, well, taking the mark of the beast is not part of your salvation. It's just an act of faith. Okay, why does Revelation 14 say if any man takes a mark, they get God's wrath? So, is Fenninger basically implying, and I'm not trying to get off of Fenninger, I just want to show that these both, both these guys are satanic heretics. Fenninger is basically implying you could take the mark of the beast and still be saved. But, according to the Bible, if any man takes it, they get God's wrath. So, there is an element of works that are involved in the future, too, in the time of Jacob's trouble, falsely called the tribulation. So, it's funny how Anderson won't read the next couple verses, which prove dispensational salvation in the future. You know, what about the what about the uh, the millennial kingdom? You know, you can't have faith because Christ is there physically ruling on the earth. It's all by works. I mean, how do you? Have, because a faith is evidence of things not seen. So if you can see Christ physically there ruling, how do you have faith? You don't. It's all by works. You see, you get into so much problems if you're non-dispensational and if you're a quote-unquote non-dispensational salvation dispensationalist like Ed Fenninger. You get into so many problems. It's funny how Anderson won't read those next couple of verses. They fly in the face of non-dispensationalism. So, don't be, I could go on and on, but just don't be deceived by non-dispensationalism. I, I believe a lot of them have a lying spirit. When you, you can show them scripture after scripture after scripture, like with Ed Fenninger, you show them scripture after scripture that prove that, that salvation was different in disp different dispensations, and they just keep twisting it, keep, keep trying to explain it away. I don't believe it's because they're deceived. I think it's they have a lying spirit that's stopping them from seeing the truth. You know? That's why I believe that wholeheartedly. Because I've, I've shown Fenninger just verse after verse after verse after verse that proved an element of works in different dispensations. And he just, he just, he'll, he'll just, he just won't, he won't take correction. You know, he just says, the he had to put up, come up with a funny video, dispensational confusion of faithful servants. With, Fen with Fenninger, everyone's confused except for him. I mean, every, everyone, you know, Brian Dillinger's confused, I'm confused, Peter Ruckman's confused, you know, Greg Miller's confused. Everyone's confused except for Ed Fenninger. You know, and again, I've shown him lots of scriptures and he just, he keeps trying to explain it away. Why? Because he's got a lying spirit inside of him. He cannot see the truth. It's stopping him from seeing the truth. That salvation is different in different dispensations. So I could go on and on about this. You get the picture. Non-dispensationalism is a satanic heresy. So don't be deceived. God bless you. Goodbye.